Welcome to CAD1 tutorial video number 4. This video will explain the meaning of winding pattern numbers in CAD1 and the pattern recommendation table which often appears when making a non-geodesic winding. We will start by making a simple pressure vessel in the usual way. In this example, the vessel will have a diameter of 200 mm, a cylindrical length of 600 mm, and ellipsoid shaped dome ends each with pole openings of 50 mm and a length of 80 mm. We will use 50 frames to define the cylindrical section and 40 frames at each of the poles uh, to define the ends. Save our mandrel. See our mandrel has been created successfully. This is a typical mandrel which might be used for a small gas cylinder. Now I'm going to set up a typical non-geodesic winding which will completely cover this vessel up to the poles. First we start with the material parameters. In this example we'll be using one roving with a width of 7.5 millimeters and set up for a carbon fiber with a tax value of 1,800 grams per kilometer. Next, we define the parameters for the non-geodesic winding. In this example, we're going to use a winding angle of 14 degrees with a friction factor of 0 0.03. And I've calculated previously that this will cover the vessel completely up to the dome, up to the poles. By default, CAD1 will define the turning zones to be on the domes, which is fine for our example here, so we'll accept those defaults. Finally, a pattern number of 1 slash 1 will be used. When start winding is clicked, you'll notice that a table appears labeled pattern recommendation. It says change pattern number, winding angle or dwell. Recommend recommendation for winding angle, reduce winding angle. And then it gives a list of alternative recommended pattern numbers. What this means is that the 1 slash 1 pattern number that we entered in the winding parameters window is not physically possible with this particular mandrel and this particular combination of winding angle, dwell, turning zones and friction factor. So CADWIND is saying that either you must change one or more of those parameters to get the pattern that you want, or it's giving you a list of alternative patterns which might be possible instead. I'm going to accept the first pattern on the list, a 5 slash 2 pattern which gives a good mandrel coverage of 102%. This pattern is possible, so CADWIND uh, then goes ahead and shows the winding pattern on the mandrel. But what does the number 5 slash 2 mean? To illustrate it best, I'm going to switch to helical winding. Usually you would use the non-geodesic winding as this is a more powerful winding method and more reliable. However, helical winding will allow me to ignore physics and any fiber slipping that might happen in real life. I can force whatever pattern number I want to appear on the mandrel then. So helical winding is good for demonstrating different pattern numbers, even though I recommend you use non-geodesic winding in most situations. I will create a very similar winding to the non-geodesic pattern we used a moment ago with a helical winding instead. We will use a winding angle of 15 degrees. The starting frame we can accept the default like before and the pattern number we will use 5 slash 1. I'm also selecting the in turning zones only option for closing the winding pattern. When I'm finished, I click on Start Winding. You'll notice that the uh, winding appears immediately on the screen. Uh, there is no pattern recommendation table as CADWIND's helical winding algorithm is forcing the pattern that I want to be displayed. Note that it's not doing any friction calculations to check whether the fibers will slip or not. So this is a 5 slash 1 pattern. What does that mean? 
Well, if I click the play button, I can show you the meaning uh, as the winding is simulated. I'll just speed up the simulation here so we don't have to wait too long. You notice as it's wound the first five cycles, I'm going to pause the animation and you can see that uh, we've created a five-pointed star on the dome of the mandrel. Cycle 1, cycle 2, cycle 3, cycle 4, cycle 5. If I continue the winding, you'll notice that the sixth cycle should be laying uh, right next to the first cycle. And as we continue, the seventh cycle should be next to the second one, the eighth cycle next to the third, and so on and so on. It will continue in this way until the entire mandrel is covered. So, a five pattern means that five cycles are wound before the sixth is placed next to the first and the pattern repeats. It's just shifted one bandwidth across. To further illustrate the pattern number, I'm going to go back to the helical winding table and change the pattern number to a 3 slash 1. You can see in this case, instead of the five-pointed star, uh, you'll notice there's a three-pointed star or a triangle on the end of the vessel. We'll play the simulation like before. You see the first cycle there, second cycle, third cycle, we now have our triangle, and the fourth cycle should then be touching the first one, and it is. Fifth cycle touches the second cycle, sixth cycle touches the third, and so on. We just step backwards a little. You notice that in each uh, each of the cycles is just to the left of the one that came before. In this case, so the fourth cycle is to the left of the first cycle, and the seventh cycle is to the left of the fourth cycle, and so on. And this is because it's a positive pattern number. A positive pattern number indicates that the fourth cycle is shifted across in the direction of the mandrel rotation, which is on the left side from this point of view. If we repeat the winding with the same pattern number, only negative, you'll notice that each cycle should be then laying on the right-hand side, which is uh, against the direction or opposite to the direction of the mandrel rotation. And then we can see the fourth cycle, in this case, is on the right of the first cycle. However, the winding pattern is defined by two numbers, not just one. So far we've been only discussing the first number. The second number is called the skip index. If I go back to a 5 slash 1 pattern, now I can demonstrate the meaning of the skip index more clearly. We simulate our five-pointed star winding again. You'll notice that the points of the star are being wound in sequence. So point number one, cycle number one, point number two is cycle number two, point number three, cycle three, four, and five until we have our star. If I use a skip index of two, then CADWIND is going to skip every second star point. We'll still have our five-pointed star, but the sequence of the but the sequence that the points of the star is in, is wound will have changed. So we see our first cycle here winding the first point. The second cycle is now winding the third point on the star. The third cycle is winding the fifth point. The fourth cycle is winding the second point, and the fifth cycle is winding the fourth point of the star. We still end up with a five-pointed star, just the sequence that it's been wound has changed. So the skip index makes very little difference to the part that is wound, and the CADWIND user really doesn't need to worry about it too much. It's just a mathematical way that CADWIND uses to describe the sequence of the winding path. 
Now that we have a better understanding of the pattern number, I'll go back to non-geodesic winding and I'll summarize the meaning of the pattern recommendation table that we saw at the beginning of this tutorial. I'll wind the same pattern as we did at the beginning, 14 degrees winding angle, pattern number 1 slash 1, everything the same. And like before, the pattern recommendation table appears. This is telling me that the 1 slash 1 pattern I chose is not physically possible. Below is a list of alternative patterns which might be possible. Note that there's no guarantee that any of these patterns will work. However, they are listed in order from the pattern that is most likely to work down to the pattern that is least likely to work at the bottom of the list. The list is very long, but in most situations it's only the first few patterns which will actually work. So in reality, you only have a few patterns to choose from at the beginning. If you find a situation where none of the patterns work, then you must go back and change one or more of the winding parameters in the winding parameter table. When choosing a pattern, I suggest that you first choose a pattern which gives you the degree of coverage that you want. Uh, that's the most important thing. If you want 100% covering, if you choose a pattern that gives you 127% covering, for example, then you'll be winding much more material in the layer than necessarily. If you choose a pattern which gives you 127% coverage, then you're adding 27% uh, more material than is necessary, which increases the cost of the material and also increases the winding time. So generally the pattern number that you want is a second priority when choosing a winding pattern and the degree of coverage should be in most situations your first priority. In this case number 8 here with 120% covering won't work anyway. If it doesn't work and you click OK the table just comes back and you have to choose a, a pattern which is higher up on the table until you get one that does work. That brings us to the end of the tutorial video. In summary, we look briefly at the meaning of the pattern number, the meaning of the skip index number, the purpose of the pattern recommendation table and how to use it. Thank you very much.